we're here today with Karen Cox, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Kent. Uh, I'm Ruth, I'm the Union President here at Kent Students' Union. Uh, so we're here to talk to Karen about the UCU strike action that could affect students across the University of Kent campuses. Uh, so my first question to Karen is, do you support UCU and their members' demands in the strike? Thanks, Ruth, and I'm really happy to be here having this, this conversation with you. Um, I think that this is a really challenging issue, um, the issue around pensions, and provision for people once they retire is, is hugely important to people. Um, so I absolutely understand colleagues' concerns um, when there are changes to things like our pensions. Um, I don't necessarily feel that, you know, in an ideal world we would be in this position, but I absolutely recognise why we are. So people will strike and they have indicated that they have chosen to strike. Our role here at the university is to make sure that we mitigate any impact of that. People are perfectly free to strike, but we have to make sure that that has minimal impact on our students and their experience here with us. I just wanted to quickly quote from a petition that's been written by students Pebbles Buckley and Lily Dedman, who's our women's officer, um, and they've written a petition, a letter to the Vice-Chancellor, which has been signed by over 2,000 students. Uh, they've said they support the reasons behind staff members striking. Uh, they know they would too uh, if they were ever in that position, uh, but it doesn't take away the incredible irritation and frustration that they feel as students. Um, so they've given Karen a concept, which is if you pay for a party to have catered food and then the catering company never shows up with your food, what happens? You demand a refund, of course. Um, so they don't support the marketization of education and despise the business-like way that sometimes higher education is run. But they say that if the university is going to treat this like a business, then so are they. So they've asked, will you consider reimbursing students for the contact time lost? The real thing that we're focused on here is making sure that we mitigate any action that our staff take. We will be making sure that if students are told that a lecture will not be delivered, that that will be rescheduled or reprovided in some way, shape or form. But until we actually get to that time, we're not actually going to know the full impact. You might consider after the action is taken whether you could can reimburse students financially for their time lost. I think if we're replacing then and rescheduling and making sure that students are able to continue with their programmes, that there is no need for a financial compensation. Why are students the ones who might have to pay for pension providers' decision to change academic staff pensions? Is that fair? I absolutely understand students' frustrations. I think the whole sector is frustrated by the position that we find ourselves in. I think that it's a real challenge around pensions. So absolutely, I want to make sure that our staff have access to really good pension provision and support. We want a great scheme for them, but we also need to make sure that this is affordable and I think that these are the challenges so how much more can we pay into pensions as both individuals and the employees contributions and then look at the employer contributions as well this is the proposal that was on the table in terms of the negotiations between universities UK who are representing the employers and UCU the UUK one was the one that was voted on overall and I realized that that is a real challenge for colleagues in the pension scheme. That has now been put in a process where that will be consulted on nationally. And I hope that we get to a position where there is a good pension for our staff, but there's also something that's sustainable in the long term in terms of the contributions that are required to make sure that people get that decent payout at the end when their pensions are being taken. The Kent Graduate School Association uh, is representing postgraduate students who are both academic staff in some cases, uh, but also students learning PGT or PGR courses. Um, so they said they support the lecturers 100% in their strike and the focus should not be on blaming lecturers for students losing out on their very expensive education, but on how the university's treatment of the lecturers is what causes the strike. What will be done from the university management perspective to minimise the negative impact on students? First of all we're communicating with students with yourselves and through our FAQs, through schools. For me this is something about how do we ensure our staff can express their frustrations? How do we do that in a way that means that our students are as least impacted as possible? Um, if, if people want extra tutorials, if, whatever it is that we need to be doing, then our schools are looking at how they can mitigate that. I think the really frustrating thing is none of it's very uncertain at the moment what, what the impact will actually be. But there is a significant number of, of staff that are concerned about this, taking action, and also that creates frustrations right across the board. Raise questions in your school. Raise it with heads of school. Raise it with your tutors. Um, Ensure that you're looking at the web pages so that any of the questions that have been raised already, there should be answers to those. 
um, and let's keep talking. Based on the assumption that industrial action will go ahead, we've had some from some PGT students studying social work in Medway. Um, their course is professionally accredited uh, and is based a lot of them on bursaries, um, which they need a certain number of attendance uh, amount of attendance. Um, so they want to know: Is there any guidance for students regarding the impact of withdrawn lectures and reduced teaching hours on the validity of degrees such as BA on social work? We will be making sure that our students graduate and they graduate with the relevant requirements to make sure that they meet any professional body requirements. So if a lecture is cancelled and if it needs to be rescheduled because of those kinds of requirements or replaced in some way, those requirements will be met and students will not be disadvantaged. With the cuts recommended, how can you guarantee Kent will be able to recruit and retain top talent? Really difficult because of course pensions are seen as part of the total reward package. Unfortunately, the defined benefit scheme as proposed by the USS in terms of keeping that going is unaffordable for universities and employees as well, given the increases that we are all being told will be required in order to sustain those defined benefits. So for me this is about getting us to a position where we understand what the defined contribution pension will actually give people when they come into retirement. Um, I think it's really positive that we keep that defined benefit option open which is what is on the table. So I think there are opportunities here both for us all to be thinking about how do we manage the process that we're in at the moment, how do we keep the door open so that there is an opportunity to possibly go back to a defined benefit part of the scheme, but how do we also help each other understand more about what the defined contribution element of the scheme is. Now I recognise that when calculations are presented by UCU, of course it doesn't look as good. Um, but we also have to recognise that actually in order to have those benefits, we are being required both as employers and employees to say whether we would be prepared to raise our contributions. And we've fed back that actually that, that the requirements that are being put upon us are actually unaffordable and therefore we have to negotiate to a different position. So I understand that and obviously... It when you talk about employers contributing more that means that students money essentially yeah. contributing more um but what i would ask back is that are you putting pressure on uk to negotiate with ucu and uss over those pensions um in terms of finding an outcome that is basically acceptable to all parties yes absolutely myself and my colleagues are pressing for continued discussion and negotiations for that to be done in the spirit of trying to get the best deal for, for both parties, as it were, it sounds terribly adversarial, and I recognise that that's, that's the position that, that we are in. But absolutely, we need to be talking and negotiating and sharing information with members of USS about what this actually means. I'm absolutely encouraging UUK to do that, both in the meetings I have at UUK, in conversations that we have just as part of our normal day-to-day -day business. We've had USS advisors here at the university. We've been challenging them over the actuarial valuations, getting them to explain to us why we're in this position. We want to be able to offer great pensions to our staff, but we also want to be able to afford it as well. Um, so we do have to get to a negotiated position, and that's absolutely what I would be pressing for. We can't pr uh, predict what's going to happen. Um, we're going to keep in touch with you, and uh, we're going to continue to operate our website, which is the uh, kentunion.co.uk forward slash strike, uh, on which we're going to keep updated on, on questions. So you can input your questions there into what you want to ask Karen, the Vice-Chancellor, and we'll continue to have a dialogue with her about it, either through an open letter or interview or however else we do that as the strike action progresses. Uh, we also received, as part of asking you for questions on this, Lots of questions about the uh, the ins and outs of this and how this will work in terms of, uh, you know, if your lecture's cancelled, how will you find out, etc. Um, so we're going to put all of those up on the FAQs on both Kent Union website and the University of Kent website. Uh, so you'll hopefully be able to go through there uh, and see uh, everything you need to know in terms of that action. And we'll put a link to that in the video here as well. Uh, so thank you very much, Karen, for being here and talking to us. And can I say, Ruth, I wouldn't expect anything less. And as I said, I, you know, we do we do want people to to raise things, to challenge things. But we also need to engage in a discussion um, and we also need to start to try and understand each other's positions. Um, and that's the only way you do that is by talking. So um, please continue to raise questions. There'll be some things we can address really easily, other things we need to take away and deal with. Um, please raise things in your schools directly with your schools because they are the ones who are dealing with these issues and will know the answers to the questions.